For most guys, this might sound familiar. After a good night of sleep, you hop into the shower, you start washing yourself properly, and then at once you feel a weird structure in your balls. And you start to question, was it there before? Does it feel normal? And these thoughts might quickly escalate to worries. And that is where this video comes in. We will cover the normal anatomy and structure of your balls and testicles. We will cover how to do a proper self-examination and we will cover testicular cancer. So make sure to watch the whole video because we cover all these topics and much, much more. For those of you meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul. I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and it's my mission to medically educate you, my viewer, because educated people make healthier decisions, which is the whole point of this whole channel and this video. So let's get learning. As mentioned, we will start this video with a brief overview of the anatomy and the function of the male reproductive system. The male reproductive system consists out of the penis, scrotum, testicles, epididymis, the prostate gland, and several accessory organs like the vas deferens and the seminal vesicles. Together, this reproductive system has several important functions. It produces and transports semen and sperm, it plays a role in urination, and it plays a role in the production of several sex hormones. For today's video, we will focus on the testicles, scrotum, and epididymis. First of all, let's start with the testicles, also called testis. Those are two small organs found in the scrotum with the size of an olive or a walnut. Keep in mind that it's totally normal that your testicles don't have the exact same size. The testicles are very important because they produce sperm cells and they play a role in the production of different hormones like testosterone. At the back and top of each testis, you will find the epididymis. This is a coiled long tube which stores and transports the sperm cells produced in the testis. In the epididymis, these sperm cells will mature. Lastly, the scrotum. It's a loose pouch-like sack of skin which hangs behind the penis. It holds the testicles and the epididymis as well as many blood vessels and nerves. Your scrotum protects your testes and provides them with some much needed climate control. This is necessary because normal sperm development requires a temperature which is slightly lower than your normal body temperature. In a nutshell, this is the basic anatomy of your testicles, scrotum and epididymis. But now, to put it bluntly, it's time to get to know your own balls. Of course, I'm talking about the testicular self-examination. It's best to examine your testicles during a bath or shower. This will cause the skin of your scrotum to be relaxed. Step 1. Hold your penis out of the way and examine each testicle separately. Step 2. Hold one of your testicles between your thumb and index finger and middle finger of your dominant hand. Use your other hand to support the testicle you are examining. Step 3. Use your thumb and index finger to gently pat down the testis in a systematic way from top to bottom. Step 4. Repeat this process with the other testis. It's advised to do this self-examination at least once a month. And when you're doing it, look for certain nodules or lumps, changes in consistency, shape or structure. Here it is important to note that you can feel the epididymis as a bump of coiled tube on the upper and middle outer side of each testis. You might also feel some blood vessels supporting tissue and tubes that carry sperm. Some men may be confused with these normal bumps at first. That is why it is so important you get familiar with your own testicles. Which brings us to maybe the most important question of the whole video. When should you contact your doctor? Do you experience pain in your scrotum and or testicles? Do you feel a lump or swelling in your testicle? Do you have a discoloration of the skin on your scrotum? Do you experience an abnormal feeling of warmth in your genital area? Blood in your semen? Pain in your lower abdomen? Or do you have any concerns? Then please contact your doctor. He or she can help you to find out the extent of your symptoms and the underlying cause. Your doctor might do this by asking about your medical history, your current problems and symptoms, the medication you're using, and afterwards your doctor might do a physical examination, some urine and blood tests, and if necessary, an ultrasound of your scrotum and testicles. Your doctor might also refer you to a urologist, depending on the underlying problems and causes. I hope you're finding this video helpful, because as mentioned, it's my mission to medically educate you. If you do find this video helpful, then please click the like and subscribe button. It will help out your channel tremendously and it will make me able to help more and more people. 
It's free and you can always change your mind. Let's continue. We will now take a closer look at testicular cancer, so you know what it is and when to contact your doctor. First of all, testicular cancer is rare, and most often it occurs in men between ages of 15 and 45. The two most common types of testicular cancer are the seminoma, which usually occurs at a later age. This type of testicular cancer usually grows and spreads very slowly. And the second type is the non-seminoma. Non-seminoma testicular cancer tends to happen earlier in life. They grow and spread quickly. Usually the cause of testicular cancer is unknown, but there are several risk factors. Factors which, if you have them, can increase your risk for developing testicular cancer. Common risk factors are having an undescended testicle, having a family history of testicular cancer and being Caucasian. If you do develop testicular cancer, usually the first symptom is a lump or a bump which you notice on your testicle. Other common symptoms are a heavy feeling in your scrotum, a dull ache in your groin, sudden swelling in your scrotum, enlargement or tenderness of breast tissue or back pain. When undetected, these types of cancer can grow quickly and spread outside of the testicle to other parts of your body. There is some positive news though. Testicular cancer, even when it has already spread outside of the testicle, can usually be treated very effectively. However, the specific treatment depends on the type of testicular cancer you have, the severity of your symptoms and how far it has progressed. However, usually it consists out of surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy and immunotherapy. Regarding surgery, the affected testicle is usually surgically removed. This is called a radical inguinal orchitomy. The surgeon does this by making a cut in the groin, through which the whole testicle is pulled out. Afterwards, a prosthetic gel-filled testicle can be inserted if you choose. This might be the only treatment needed if the cancer hasn't spread beyond the testicle. Next up is chemotherapy, which spreads through your whole body. Therefore, it can kill cancer cells, which have spread beyond the testicle. It's often used after surgery, but in advanced cases, it's used before surgery. The side effects of chemotherapy might depend on the specific type of medication you are getting. However, it usually causes fatigue, a tingling sensation in your hand or feet, or even loss of feeling in your hand or feet, and it can decrease your risk for infections. In addition, chemotherapy might cause your body to stop making sperm. This can be temporary or can be permanent. Therefore, ask your doctor about your options for preserving your sperm before chemotherapy. Which brings us to radiotherapy. In radiotherapy, high-powered energy beams are used to kill cancer cells. During radiation therapy, you are positioned on a table and a large machine is moved around you. This machine points the energy beams at the precise point in your body where the cancer is located. Radiation therapy is mostly used to treat the seminoma type of testicular cancer and is usually deployed after surgery. Side effects of radiotherapy might be fatigue or nauseousness. Which brings us to the last treatment option, immunotherapy. This treatment consists out of medicines that help your body's immune system to kill cancer cells. Immunotherapy is sometimes used for advanced testicular cancer might be an option if the cancer doesn't respond to the other treatments. I hope you now know how to do a proper self-examination, I hope you know what testicular cancer is, and most importantly, when to contact your doctor. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. For those of you that want to keep on learning, check out the playlist in the description. And if you did learn something, please click the like and subscribe button to help out the channel tremendously and will make me able to help more and more people. It's free and you can always change your mind. For those of you that can't get enough, also check out the Instagram at How to Medicate, and I will see you next week with a new awesome video. Bye bye.